Welcome to the Spent the Rent podcast. I am your host, Patty Rose. My guest today from Hewlett Artistry is Matthew Hewlett. Matthew, welcome to the show. What's up, everybody? So let's tell a little backstory. Uh, you are the editor of the new film I did the podcast about uh, that's coming up film locally made called We Need Rent Money. And yeah, me and Jeremy Ferguson are, are editing that project together. And the, the flyer that I used for this show, uh, people stumbled across it on different sites. Jeremy Ferguson got the credit because the picture is you, so you didn't take that one. Right. <laughs> That's true, right. So, uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about what you are. So anyway, so you, 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 you're the editor for that. You listen to that episode and you're like, wow, this is really cool. Is that, is that pretty much how it went? That was pretty much how it went. I was like, um, I saw the episode and I had seen you in your podcast, you know, a couple of years ago or so. And at the time I was like, oh, it's pretty good, but it, it just wasn't my taste at the moment. I was listening to like horror stories and stuff like that. So anyway, uh, you know, I hear that and I'm like, man, this guy's actually pretty good from what I hear. And then I went, I like binge listen to all your shows. Uh, maybe not all of them, sure, but quite a few of them. And yeah, man, like getting back to like what you're doing now currently, I was really impressed with, with your show and what's going on. Yeah, and I appreciate it. I was all yeah. like, dude, I want to be on this guy's podcast. Yeah, yeah. So you reach out, <laughs> reach out. And then full disclosure, you were like, hey, I want to sponsor your show. And so one of the things that we do that's really cool is that I have uh, small, you know, donations, but people will become monthly sponsors. And then I find ways to help promote their, their different uh, various things. My main title sponsor I'd, I'd like to mention is Oregon Cashflow Pro. You can go on YouTube and watch videos made by James Barber, OregonCashflowPro.com as well. And he does free money management advice. I've also got 45 Degrees Northwest, which is Jake Williams, the tattoo artist, uh, who has some exciting, inform exciting stuff. He's, he's starting a new shop. We'll talk about that later. I'm going to try to get him on the show, at, and we'll talk about that at length. But yeah, you had reached out, and you said, I, I want to be a monthly sponsor. And I was like, hey, let's, let's set it up, and let's, you know, let's do an episode about, about what it is you do. And, and that, this is what I do. This is why I do what I do, is because it's a, it's a goal to create community locally for people that may you know have maybe be underrepresented or maybe don't have the same channels or maybe don't fit into the whole circle that usually gets a lot of exposure so this is really well, awesome it's good to be you know local business has got to support local business right and you run in your show you've got you've got viewers and all these other folks that are doing like photography and I don't know, cabinet building and whatever sure. tons of local folks need that need that shout out to be able to you know, keep things local and small that way you're getting really unique and quality products from a lot of these folks who are doing these things out here. And I just, I think that's great that you bring on folks like me on your Absolutely. show. Absolutely. Yeah. And then I feel what's the most, the most rewarding thing about what I do is, and I never knew what would happen. You're totally right. Early on, it was Rocky, you know, at best. <laughs> and that, you got to start somewhere. I mean, this is something I've always wanted to do is radio. And so this is this new format is is really awesome and zoom has helped during this quarantine that's about to kind of we're starting to reopen and i'm going to talk about that actually at the end of the show we're going to talk about the barber shop a little bit and for for my real business the one that actually pays for the overhead around me <laughs> and so right. um but uh you know where was i going with that <laughs> no so we you know it's really progressed but one of the beautiful things is i've seen an actual uh, community building. So I've seen fans of the show become fans of my guests and then it just grows, you know, and it's really cool when I get on social media and I see uh, supportive comments coming from people that I know that met through the, the podcast, you know, in, right. different, in ways. And it's just really rewarding. So with you, when you reached out and I started dinkering around on your tinkering around, whatever the word is on your stuff, your website, which we're going to talk about a lot today. Uh, and different things and look at your photography and your short films. I was like, Ooh, I think that my, my audience is going to really like this. It's going to really like what he's about. Uh, you know, and then there's some crossover too. I've had Will Brack on the show. Uh, he's been featured in a few of my films. And right. And he's an up and coming actor locally. That's, that's really doing awesome. He's got, he's, he's a beautiful man. So it makes it easy. He is. <laughs> I'm actually that, that D and D game we were talking about earlier. Uh, he's actually a player in that session. So yeah, so really often cool we were talking about it, because I don't know if they <laughs> see this in the video, but your name on D&D &D is Flint, Flintlock McKinnon. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, good to the, it's good that he's Irish. So, but uh, 
And so, yeah, D and D I asked you, I was like, do you use zoom? And you, and you were like, well, absolutely. I do D and D and that's, that's so cool. <laughs> I actually have a, a guest that we just haven't had the right scheduling, but Damien sailors, who is, he writes his own, uh, he's writing a D and D book and all kinds of cool stuff. And he's real uh, into it. He builds the sets and stuff that people can use and he he's made it a career. So we're well, going to have awesome. him on. Yeah. So I think you'll really enjoy that episode too. So, so that's really cool. Well, Matthew, again, thank you for doing this. Uh, I want to mention Hewlett Artistry. The website is hewlettartistry.com. And you can go on there and, and you do photography and short films. The thing that you wanted to reach out and, and reach some new people today was the, was the filmmaking. That's really what you want to focus on. Now, the photography is something, if anybody wants any photography, they can call you and they can reach out to you. Right. And, you, and what kind of stuff? Let's talk about that first and then we'll really dive into the filmmaking. But what do you do with photography? Do you do weddings? You know, you can talk about that. So, sorry. Uh, back in the day, like I got started in films and then, you know, I, I kind of just lost touch with a lot of the people I was doing films with. So I moved over to photography to try and do something that I could, you know, do without a team of people. Right. And it kind of took off from there. I was doing weddings. Uh, product photography, um, a lot of portraits. Portraits are probably the main uh, thing that I that I do. Um, and then on top of that, it was just really fun to like go out and like do some landscapes or go out in the middle of the night and get like long exposures or really just infrared actually also is one of those things that really interests me. Um, and it just became a really, really big passion of mine to see this work that I'm putting into the camera and have it come out of the computer and the clients look at it and be like, Oh my gosh, this is awesome. Thank you so much. I get the response a lot with weddings in particular, cause like everyone's all stressed, but it's their best day. They're supposed to have their, their most, you know, best attitude. Nothing's supposed to go wrong. It's supposed to be fantastic. And it doesn't always work that way, but as long as the photos come out, right. Right. You know, you don't, you don't mess anything up with what, you know, the photos or the video people only remember, you know, that, I mean, they're going to remember the other stuff, but they're really going to be grateful that you got those awesome moments on camera. Right. Like the last winning I did several people cried and they, you know, I took that moment to snap a couple shots, but they loved them. Man, yeah. Was... I think that the real action <laughs> shots, whether it's shedding a, cause it's a joyous tear, but whether it's shedding a tear, hopefully, Hopefully, it was, it was, it was. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they would have appreciated it otherwise. But I think that those action shots at weddings are the ones that are really awesome. Just in anything. I think when people get laughter in photography, that's really cool. And so, you know, that is really the ones that, uh, you know, I really appreciate. So, yeah, that's cool. And so where can people, I mean, we're going to say this over and over again, but where can people reach out if they are interested uh, I know booking for weddings now during the quarantine has been kind of interesting because a lot of Zoom stuff, so that wasn't the thing. Yep. <laughs> so people were trying to, you know, try if they had a date in mind and they wanted to do it, they went ahead and did it in different ways. And I think that's really cool. And I think that's innovative. And I'm sure you appreciate it as well, even though it kind of cuts you out of the equation. But, so but uh, I actually ahead. had a I actually had a wedding gig planned for April 26th. Right. And it was supposed to be up in the mountains, supposed to be real beautiful. A gal I went to high school with and her husband, her now husband, because they ended up did going ahead and getting married. Um, what they worked out with me was that uh, they were going to have a small thing with just their family because she's immune suppressed. Uh, so she couldn't be out. She couldn't risk it at all. Right. Uh, but they had a small thing with just their, their super close family, the people that's really in their household and give or take a little extra. But what they've done is they've worked out a situation where I'm going to come out and they're going to have um, like a reception. Yeah. Like a, like yeah. a follow up, you know, after, after all this is over. And I think that was probably like the smartest thing that people could do in this time. Cause you're still getting, you know, the bang for your buck, but also you're, you're having that opportunity to have that wedding that you really wanted to have. And it wasn't just, you know, in your mom's backyard. Right. <laughs> yeah, I've kind of thought I like the idea too. Like at a at like the one year anniversary is when you do the ceremony. Mm. I've always kind of felt like that was a neat idea because the honeymoon, it's like that's about you two. I know I don't know. People do whatever they want with it. You know, they they can go any way they want. I've performed a couple weddings, which is really funny because I have no business doing that. But I with, got ordained. with your music? No, no, no. I got ordained 
Oh no, no, my music would ruin a, my my music would ruin a wedding. That's not that's not the thing. But I got ordained. I had a buddy, James Malcolm, and he had a big announcement. He was in a band in Vegas, but he's from Eugene. And he was like, "Everybody meet um, at my parents' house, which was outside of Eugene, Vanita or whatever." I can't. It's like, yeah, Crow. it's in Crow. That's what it is. And he was like, "Me, I've got a big announcement." Well, we all thought it was that he had a record deal, you know, and that actually was part of it, but. He was like, I'm getting married. Well, I was late. And so the way he did it is he had a sign up sheet for the different roles in the wedding. So he's like, you know, uh, sign up for whatever you want. And everything was taken when I got there. And he's like, crap. He's like, I really wanted you to be in it. I didn't, I didn't want to try to pick and choose because I have 15 best friends, you know, kind of thing. And so I was like, well, I guess I could get, I could marry you guys. I could get ordained. And I was kidding. And he's like, would you do that? Would you do that? And I was like, sure. And then fast forward to the day of the rehearsal a couple days before the wedding and he's like so what are we doing and i'm like what do you mean what are we doing he's like well you're the you're you're performing this you're doing the ceremony so where we, what are we doing and i'm like oh my god like i thought i was gonna get some like guidance so i just went on youtube and i watched a couple videos of some weddings and took some notes and it went pretty well i was nervous as hell but then i got a call and this will be a quick story and then we'll get back to talking about you but then <laughs> then i got a call from a friend of mine who had someone had been married unofficially and they needed it for insurance purposes. They wanted to make it official. And they had a child that was like 12 years old oh, and my geez. friend, so my friend Sonia. So they had already done it. They just didn't make it official, you know? So they were like, crap. Well, at this point, I think one of them was sick and, and they needed to make it official for insurance purposes, you know? And so right. uh, on the books. And so she reached out and she's like, Hey, can you do this wedding a couple of days? They'll give you like 25 bucks. This was quite a few years ago. So my life has changed. But I was like, oh, sure, whatever. <laughs> and I totally forgot about it. And she calls me and she's like, can I come and get you? Because I didn't have a car. She's like, can I come and get you? You need to do that wedding today. And I was drunk. Like, I was straight up like, I'm drunk right now. And she was like, I need to come get you. You told me you would do this. All you need to do is sign the paperwork. So we went to Sweet Life. And it was like, and I go, do you, do you? Come on. Yeah, nah, nah. And then I just signed the paperwork. And they gave me 25 bucks and a 12 pack of paps. <laughs> it was pretty oh, good. Man. Anyway, so back to it, it was pretty funny, and I have, talk, I don't know if I'll, talk about I'll your backyard it. wedding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was just right in front of Sweet Life. I, I was I was kind of embarrassed for them uh, to have me doing it, but they really just wanted to have it finalized and formalized. And the kid was so ex it just so happy. It's twelve. Years hey man, old. you met the expectations. You got there. It didn't right. matter how you got there. <laughs> they didn't. They didn't say I had to be sober. Now, fast forward. This was years ago. Like I said, I'm over four years sober now. So that is kind of an embarrassing. Congratulations, story. man. Thank, thank you. It's kind of an embarrassing story, but at the same time, it was pretty funny. But uh, so, like, are I said, you Irish? I'm very, very Irish. You, you can see today. Yeah. I kind of, I kind of gathered, just figured I'd ask, you know, Irish preacher and whatnot. Yeah, we were actually <laughs> going to be going to Ireland in September and that's been postponed, which is really heartbreaking because I was really looking forward to it. Oh man. And I'm going to do a lot on the podcast about that. I'm going to try to interview somebody in Ireland and so we'll do some really cool stuff. But anyway, back to you. So the, <laughs> the big thing that you wanted to talk about today was filmmaking. Right. So I wanted to ask you uh the short films are what you've done a lot of and what and what you really enjoy uh where is youtube i, I put the link in the show notes and i, I hope i put the right one because it, i put the link to the hewlett uh, artistry short films yep that's the and, one okay and so uh people can go on there after they listen to this show don't go now listen to this whole thing but but after this <laughs> you're done listening to this you can go and watch some of your short films what's the one with will brack uh there's some magic and some stuff in it there's a there's a couple that feature Will Brack. So Dark Encounters is a film. So I just spent a lot of money on new new production gear, right? And I've been it, uh, this is before <laughs> quarantine. I was itching to get out there and make something, um, test out the camera. So I I hit up everyone I could, and Will Brack, being as awesome as he is, along with Rob Weaver and uh, some of the other cast, uh, they were like, "Yeah, let's do it. Let's make a movie." So we go out to this warehouse that. Uh, we have access to, and we make this short magic action film. I had such bigger hopes for it, right? I don't, I don't know if you've seen it. If you have, understand it is just an effects test. Sure. Because I, I had bigger hopes for it, uh, but really the realistic reason of making it was I was working. I'm working on this other uh, longer film that's going to be very effects intensive. I was like, I need to test out my camera and get to learn it, and I need to test out the effects. So. 
we go out there, we film it. By the time the day's over, I'm like, this is going to be awful. It's going to be crap. It's not going to be good because uh, we never even got the one shot that I like envisioned because there was just so much going on. People had places to be. Some people had to pee like and we there was nowhere to be nowhere to do that. Um, so they had to leave set and go off to the gas station to go do that. And it's like, well, this is just this is not working out. <laughs> yeah, And that's so I mean, you know, Joey Helpish and I talk a lot about this. And if you're in for, unfamiliar with him, you need to go check out the channel The Ish, which is a virtual venue that he's just created where he he has people become admins on Facebook. And they become admins for an hour or whatever, and they perform live online. And this is going to go on past the quarantine, but it was definitely pushed because of the quarantine. Well, Joey Helpish and I talk about something, and it's make something terrible today. And granted, the goal is never to make something bad, but you have to, like you said with my podcast, you have to start somewhere. You've got to so- make stuff. Yeah. That, yeah. That's, that's the school. That's the radio school, the film school. Just make yeah. stuff, and you'll Absolutely. learn along the way. And I think fans of your work, I mean, I have watched snippets of that. I haven't watched the whole thing, but I watched the ending sequence and some of the the effects and stuff. And it was really cool. Visually, it's awesome, you know, and visually the work that you've done is, is incredible. And so it shows the potential, you know, and, and it, and I, I think that you, I can tell that that one was, I know how it is when you make something, you look back and you're like, Oh my gosh. Cause it just, it brings like painful memories. What would be the film that you think, turned out the best from from your work at this point um it would probably be one of two films so merchants of the great plague is a half hour short film that i worked on for um a year and a half or so we filmed during the summer one year during the summer the other year and i cut it together uh throughout the winters and picked up pickup shots as i could um that one as far as like how much work and effort I put into the film would be one of the best ones to watch, but it's also a half hour. So Which not is, many I mean, people. I think, yeah. I think nowadays though, with YouTube, you know, you can watch it on your Roku TV or smart TV or whatever. And so it's, yeah. a, little, it's a little bit different. So that's what I encourage is people to subscribe to your channel that the show, the link is in the show notes. And then, and then that way, when you make something new or, or whatever, they can find it that way and watch it on their TV in a comfortable setting, you know, so they're not sitting on their phone for a half an hour. But the one I'm I'm really proud of, I I actually just watched it the other day, and I I would I got that warm fuzzy feeling you get when you like, you know, I, after watching I'm like I'm really glad we made this film. It turned out so good. So it's um, Gold Desires. Gold Desires is a western about a a mystical gold panner uh, who gives out wishes for gold. Oh wow. Um the the ten minute five minute film that it is i can't remember uh follows uh, a gang of folks that just kind of have picked each other up along the way get into an encounter and then go see the gold panner um why i love that film so much is not because of its visuals um but because of like how well the story came together so quick um that's that's awesome so it was an improv film. One of the characters in it is a student at some high school up in Eugene Springfield. And he was like, I need this for my senior project. I'm like, dude, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> he said he needed 10 hours of filmmaking uh, to fill out his senior project. I'm like, let's do it. And I gathered up all the people I could. And, you know, we made this short Western. It, it turned out really good. It's just the one thing that I hated about the whole film was I had a camera setting that was wrong. Um, my lens was a bit too soft, uh, which what that means is it, it was just a tad blurry, not because of uh, my focus was off, but because it's a cheap lens and I was shooting it wide open aperture. So I get the most background blur, uh, which just left the whole film soft and not what I wanted it to look like. Um, but, you know, we went out there, we had a great day filming it out in the lake bed of uh, Darina back when it was all drained one of my favorite places to film by the way because it's just yeah. so alien and cool and sure you know any other time of the year you're 30 feet underwater <laughs> right so now people I, we're not going to talk price because it varies so much when it comes to filmmaking but one of the things that you told me is is that that if people are interested in contacting you, you to make a film make a music video make a short film 
or even we talked about even filming home videos. Maybe not mm -hmm. be, you know, people don't think about that. Getting a high quality 6k is what you're working with now. Yeah. Like getting, getting, getting high quality home videos, but that's something you can do like a kid's birthday party or something like that. You I've will, a you will work with people to where it's very affordable because this is a passion of yours and you want to get the usage so that, and in some of the more affordable ones, you, if there's some learning, uh, moments like that, like with learning the lens may not be what you needed and some of the settings, it's better when it happens with something that people aren't investing so much into it. You know what right. I'm saying? So, so and that's why I spend a lot of my time making short films. Right. Cause it, it, you work out the kinks and learn and you don't learn from doing things right. That's one thing that I say all the time is that, you know, and I don't want to like be misleading. I think you do amazing work. I've looked, I've seen your stuff and you, especially the photography is what I've seen a lot of. And that stuff is, is stunning. And you Thank know, you. one of the other things I do want to mention on Facebook, you do giveaways, which is really cool. And it's a, it's a cool way to reach a new audience, uh, you know, cause people will share your stuff and then it, you know how that works. Everybody yeah. knows where people will, you, you share this comment on it, like it, all that good stuff. And then, and talk about that. Has that, has that really been something that's gotten a lot of attention for you? So yeah, once every once in a while, usually it's, um, I'll at least do a couple a year, but typically it's based on how many likes I have on the Facebook page. You how know, I'll give away something. Followers. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give away something. Most recently it was a, an elk canvas that was like two feet by three feet. Um, something I paid a lot of money for last summer. You know, I was hoping to sell in the art show at Bohemia Mining Days, which is Cottage Grove's uh, kind of like local, excuse me, amusement event. Yeah, yeah. Like they have gold panners and just, uh, you know, amusement park rides and gold mining stuff. It's really awesome stuff. Anyway, we had an art show that I had put on uh, with uh, a guy I know, Jeff. Um, and I was hoping to sell some of it. I sold like the smallest one, right? One of my most beautiful pictures, it's, um, it's like a path in the woods at Spirit Falls. Um, I, I sold a really tiny one, and then the rest just didn't sell because who wants, to, who wants to pick up a giant canvas when they're out wanting to you know, get drunk, listen to music, sure. go do these cool activities, ride the rides? You know, it, was, um, it wasn't a good spot for an art show, but it was really cool. So I held on to this stuff, and I've been giving it away here and there because – you know, I would rather these things be on other people's shelves, right? Other people's walls. That, like I gave away all of them actually from that day uh, wow. from when I printed them. I spent like a couple hundred bucks printing five canvases. All of them are gone, given away for free because I'd rather people get to enjoy them. Right. Yeah, I know how that works. I've done that a lot with my music and different stuff is, is that I'm – I'm kind of bad because I want to share it, you know? And so yeah. sometimes it, it's, it's, I always envision that the money will come, you know, you do your passion because you love it. And as you get better and better and better at it, everyone has their different strategies, the way they go about it. You know what I mean? Some people right. are like, no, 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 I'm going to hold it in and I'm going to wait for the best thing that I possibly could put out. I release everything I do. And then I think people see the progress. And I think that that's, I mean, you said it yourself. That, and I, that's like one of the best compliments that I could receive what you told me at the beginning of the show about how, you know, I watched it early on. I was like, that's cool. He's doing his thing. But then you saw progress. And that means so much to me because that's my goal. And that's what you strive for as an artist is for somebody to, to jump on the ride at some point and see it progress and grow, you know? Right. And so and you're going to, you're going to get those followers with whatever you do, right? You're totally. going to get those people that believe in you. Right. And they're going to they're going to go out of their way to make you money and fund you and promote you. And there's those people they are just going to they're going to believe in you and believe in your passion. And, you know, you keep doing what you're doing. You're going to get more and more of those. Totally. So, yeah. So Facebook, uh, again, this link is in the show notes as well. Show notes and on Instagram. I put all those in there so that you can for anybody listening to this, you can follow what you do. I also invited a lot of my friends and I noticed a lot of my friends have started following you. So they'll Thank start you for that. You're welcome. And that's part of the partnership. That's one of the things that right away, uh, and, and anybody listening, one of the best things you can do to help support, I'm going to give a little secret here. It's not a, it's funny. It's not a secret, but <laughs> one of the things you can do to really help support businesses, artists, you go on the communities tab of their Facebook page. 
And then you go down to where it shows like how many friends you have mutual friends or how many of your friends follow it. There's a button that says invite. And then you click on that and invite everybody from your friends list. It's really easy to do. So just go to the communities tab and invite all your friends to follow. Now, who are now don't be, don't be scared to do it. People, people sometimes think like, I don't want to be a burden. Like, no, they can just say, no, it's cool. Exactly. You're giving those people the opportunity to have joy in their life by seeing something they may really enjoy by and doing there's, that. There's people that I have that I'm friends with that do it quite a bit where they invite to different things. And sometimes you get the feeling like it's not as personal. Sometimes it is personal. Sometimes people individually invite people because they're like, I think you're going to really like this. And I think that's really cool. But then it's a lot easier to just go invite all. And it is really huge for small artists and businesses to have that because you could potentially then reach 80 new followers in one day. And that's a small number to somebody, but that's very significant to an independent artist, especially when you, you know, like my podcast right now has like 860 followers. So it's, it's small, yeah. you know, but when people can do that invite all thing, you can really grow. And that's how we built the 541 community. And again, the 541 community, which is a Facebook group only has like 900 people in it as of right now. We don't care about those numbers because 900 people doesn't mean that the 901st person is going to be, oh, now we're significant. No, we're a community that matters regardless of how small of a size it is. And that we've allowed people to use the 541 community group as a bulletin board. A lot of pages don't let people do that because they, you know, if people are over spamming it, sometimes I'll delete some stuff here and there and I'm kind of inconsistent with the rules, but I just let it be its own thing. It's not something I put too much stock into. And it's, it's been good because people share a lot of stuff from different places. I did notice one time I, I was torn. Uh, someone posted a sermon, a quarantine, you know, live feed sermon from church. And I was like, oh God, not that I don't, I respect that that's, a, that's happening or whatever. People believe what they want, you know, but I knew that some of the people in the group were going to be upset and people reported it. And I'm like, I don't want to delete this because I'm allowing people to do what they do. It's really judgment. One of my biggest things in the hypocrisy of religion and, and I guess the other end of it is when people are like, I hate Christians. They're so judgmental. I'm like, well, isn't that kind of judgmental? Right. You know what I mean? So it's like, <laughs> I personally choose that. I love everybody in that realm. Believe what you want and, and show respect to every, everyone across the board. So I, I, I let it stay, you know, because some people might've liked it, but anyway, oh, that's a tangent. I can I like the tangent though. I, I kind of am. Uh, <clears throat> I am of the same mindset. Um, I, I I don't want people to feel like they can be they're judged or I just want everyone to, regardless of your religious political views, I want everyone to get along and be happy. Exactly. Exactly. Some of the, you know, I I'm I'm decently a religious person, but I have all my friends are actually atheists. Uh, I've got quite a few Wiccan friends, quite a sure. few Buddhist friends, like. You know, the people that are, judge, are judging whether they're Christian, atheist, whatever, um, those people are, they're not really following what they're preaching. And that's just, it's just, they're showing themselves to be not as wise as they think they are. Sure. Absolutely. And on the flip side, I do think a lot of time there's pain there. And that's why people have that kind that's of true. hasty, because they've been wronged in some way. And so it takes people that maybe do ha live the walk or have the, you know, that are Christian or whatnot to reach out. And instead of getting offended by that action to be like, look, I love you regardless if you love me <laughs> kind of thing. That's the, that's the right way to, to live it. Anyway, back to filmmaking. Back so, uh, um, you know, what would you say is the genre that you like to work with and the, and the type of films? Now, this is a tough question because I know that it's open to everybody to call you and reach out and, and ask for your services. But if it looks to me like the films that you've made, there's kind of a fantasy, kind of a lore, kind of world that you like to work with. So I can't say like one because I love so many genres, but I could give you like, I don't want to work on something that's boring. I don't want to work on, you know, a, a BBC documentary in some guy's barn, right? I would. I'm not saying I wouldn't paying sure. gigs or paying gigs and I'll enjoy what I'm doing along the way. But if I'm making a film, right. And something I want to be passionate about, I want everyone else to be passionate about it. Right. And you're going to do that by keeping them entertained on set. 
they're gonna they're gonna perform a lot better if they feel like they're being interacted with and having an opportunity to to show off themselves. So one of the thing one of the big things I do is like little action tidbits and drama and things that that you have to pull a lot out of of your actors and even your crew <clears throat> to be able to get everything right. I've worked on sci-fi projects, westerns, um, fantasy films. Um, zombie action films if you're into that you know mercies yeah, yeah. of the great plague <laughs> yeah uh, i'm just saying like one my favorite thing is to to keep the people that are entertaining you entertained right, right? so action is typically one of those things that do, does that because they have to run around and they get their blood pumping they're having fun you know messing with toy guns and um you know just doing their thing running from zombies rolling in the dirt it's a good time on set yeah. i tell you you know in i it was kind of funny because when i did the interview with blake late uh uh from we we need rent money is blake right yeah yes. yeah it's blake okay, good <laughs> oh god i'm so bad with names anyway uh when we did that interview i talked to him about a short or a really feature length short film however we did it that i'd like to make that would be kind of a drama comedy drama really but with com comedic elements that I really want to talk to you off air about potentially seeing how we can make that come true because it's, I think you listen to that episode, you know what I'm talking about. I did. The, the thing. And it's, it's a really, it's, it, it would be not autobiographical, but it would be based on my own personal experiences. And it's something that, man, I really want to make it happen because I know it'd be fun. The thing that would be fun with that is we'd get some early two thousands, punk rock gear everybody around us would be dressed in and the music you know i could go and i could dig up local stuff with local bands from that era I and play, and play all that music and then you know get some of them to play themselves and some people to be really who they were and how oh, that would be so much fun this is one of the beauties of making films in the town that you grew up in you know everyone thinks hollywood and i think that that's kind of a dying thing nowadays people make films where they are you know, I'd like to think that, man, I don't want to move to Hollywood. I got a family, kids, but I want to be big, right? I want to, I want to sure. make money at this. I want to help people around here do that. I yeah. don't, I want to grow the filmmaking community here. Well, and go ahead. I'll be honest. I didn't have anything to say after that. <laughs> I love it. No, what I was going to say is one of the things, of, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> one of the things about We Need Rent Money that I think is really exciting is that when you watch how Blake runs the Facebook page and the social media, he's so passionate about what he's doing. He's very and this, passionate. And if, if people are unfamiliar, I encourage you to go listen to my interview with him. Uh, it's a couple back or whatever, maybe 10 back. I'm, I don't remember what episode number, but with the director of We Need Rent Money. And on his Facebook page, we kind of came cross paths because the Spent the Rent podcast, it just made right. sense, you know? <laughs> but he's sharing... Uh, photos of the of the actors and he's sharing little tidbits to get people kind of more interested as it's being edited and and created i mean the film part of it's done for the most part they may do some touches we but actually have uh one one scene we're going to go out and film here soon right uh, we just got approval from blake jeremy and i being camera guys also editors we're going to go out and make this happen something that we need to fill in but it's going to add to the quality of the film. Sure. A lot. <laughs> the amount, the extent of the actors that I'm seeing through these posts, a lot of them are just everyday people. Anybody is an everyday person, period. I don't care what job you do or how big you are, but there's, there's people that maybe have never acted before. And then there's people that have done a lot of acting. There's people that have done a lot of stage acting. There's people that have done different things. Cause I know a handful of the people in the film because of, uh, you know, they shared it on social media because I'm a barber. I know a lot of people in town, you know, right. so, so there's a few recognizable faces and we mentioned Will and, you know, I've watched Will kind of go public with his desire to become more of a serious actor. And it's been really awesome. His head he really are, took that. He, he took that on like yeah, yeah. He decided to go from music head first into acting and man, he, He's a champion swimmer. I tell sure. you what. <laughs> well, and Will Brack is an incredible musician and I've played, you know, we've had him on and, and the stuff that he makes is great. Him and I, uh, we did a collaboration song about being an Irish American, which is really cool. So yeah. Speaking, I, speaking of Will, uh, he actually did the music for Emergence of the Great Plague. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, about 80% of it. Yeah. Yeah. He's an incredible musician. So, so yeah. So anybody listening, go to the show notes of this, click on the website, Hewlett Artistry. 
And then also you can go to the YouTube page. Is there on your website, does it link you to all the, to the, to the YouTube or is that kind of separate? It should. Yeah. Um, that may, I'm in the middle of the re-editing the website. I decided my website sucked. So I was putting it back together and I'm still kind of working out the tweaks. Um, but yeah, there should be, there should be a spot where you can find the YouTube page. You can find the Facebook, find my Instagram. Uh, if so, not, I'll make sure that there will be by the time this episode airs. <laughs> so as of right now, two things that you should, re- everyone should do, whatever your desired social media page is, whether you use Facebook or Instagram or any of those, click on the show notes to the one that you choose that you, that you prefer and follow Hewlett Artistry. And then go in the show notes to the YouTube channel, Hewlett Artistry Short Films and follow those two things because those two things are the ones that you're going to get the most out of. The social media is really important because that's where you get all the updates, you know? And I think people are like, well, I want to watch the the YouTube. You kind of have to follow people or artists at multiple different avenues, you know? So that's like, that's a big thing. We try and release a video as often as possible, but with COVID and, you know, COVID kind of shut everything down. But even then filmmaking these days as a, as a father and, you know, with a full-time job, it's hard to make that kind of time. So they don't come out as often as they could. But when they do, you know, everyone's heart and soul got put into that film, right? Sure. Yeah, they're, uh, you're talking about every film. But yeah, I'm excited yeah. to see We Need Rent Money for sure. That's going to be a fun one. Now, you didn't film that, shoot it. You just are editing it. Yeah. So that's cool. So yeah, Matthew Hewlett, it's awesome. It's honor. You know, I appreciate you sponsoring the show. I'm full disclosure about that. I'm going to say it straight up. You reached out to me and were like, I want to, you know, what do you do? How do you go about it? Do you have people pay to be guests? And I absolutely do not. You know, I, I have a, an ethics where I'm not ever going to charge a guest to be, uh, have an episode because these are conversations between two people and that right. we can build a friendship that way. Now, if people would like to sponsor the show, they can go to my, my website, strpod.com slash sponsors. You can either be an individual sponsor one time or monthly. If you're a monthly sponsor, you get your picture on the website. Or if you have a business that you'd like to promote, or if you're an artist and you want to promote something, social cause, whatever it is, you can make a small monthly donation and I'll throw your uh, icon, your logo up on the website so that people can find you. And I'll mention mention it on the show, just like what you're doing with Hewlett Artistry. And I I appreciate it. So, hey, so much. You're very welcome. So this partnership will grow and we'll see. And I I want to talk to you off air about possibly putting together. uh, I don't know anything about making a screenplay. I've thought about taking some like master classes or however I want to do it. I probably would just do it on YouTube. I don't think I'm I'm going to pay because I want to do it DIY, you know. I would not recommend uh, going to college, taking a master class. I mean, you can. They're going to they're going to give you your money's worth, but your money could be better spent other ways actually going towards the project because there's everything you need to know can be learned for free see what i envision as far as this film is me and you could potentially work on something different smaller you know and then we just work out some kinks and then it'd be like ah okay i i know now what i should be thinking about and where my mindset should be at and then we can we can dive fully into the movie ezzy that i've talked about and that's something that will happen in my lifetime. So off air, we'll talk about that behind the scenes. And then, yeah. and then I'll give everybody updates as that progresses, as that starts getting off the ground. But this is a cool partnership, and I, I look forward to seeing it blossom. So, Matthew, it's really awesome to fo- formally actually meet you. We've talked on the phone a couple times, but this, this is probably the longest we've ever talked. It's so, a, thank you so much, man. It's an honor to be on your show. It's an honor to meet you. I love what you're wearing right now. I got the green going. It's awesome. The Boondock Saints. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, yeah. So, so I want a, a special uh, thing today. I'm going to play a song, a single that uh, by a local hip hop artist, uh, Ender One. He just, he was my number one guest. Ender One was my first guest. He's been on the show twice. He's, if, if you guys aren't familiar with Ender One, he's just killing it in hip hop. And he just released a single uh, called Guts and Glory with a feature that's pretty awesome with a feature with the MC apathy. And so this is uh, we're going to end it with a show or end it with a song. This is Ender one featuring apathy yeah. guts and glory. Hey, Matthew Hewlett. It's thank crazy. you. A lot. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you. This is just the shit that I'm on now. I don't calm down. I'm a workaholic. I ain't putting this mop down. I get rid of trash in this game. Like it's my job now. Pointing at these rappers like, oh, I miss the spot now. Cockbell. I don't give a fuck about what's hot now. So hostile like I'm California rolling I'm just pulling on stop now See I remember back 
freestyling in bed. It's silly, but I would nap, kick raps better than half of these songs now. Shit, even if I had thrown this verse off my head, it could kill you, that's no cap. Did you catch that I'm calm loud like God? Wow. Is this really hip hop now? Can't even tell the difference between rap and pop now. Even having skills on stage don't get you pops now. One clout, easy, just flaunt what you're not about. I was raised in the days where snitching was not allowed. Now they all rats. Takashi's just who we see on trial. Let's pause now. Every rapper's a boss now. Diamonds in their teeth, so they all got a floss now. Claim to be original, but sound how they all sound. And acting like a king, I'm not your dog, I will not bow. Thinking you hard as nails, so get on tracks and you talk how. Your God's gift to man, but even Jesus was crossed out. Come on. I refuse to let the world control me. Make music that all sounds the same. See, the truth is that these rappers all bore me. If I'm in the mood, you better talk your Chauvinistic to women, but as long as I was winning and as long as earth is spinning, I'm doing whatever app needs. Wanting money like athletes, but couldn't fuck with whack beats. Never sold my soul for the cold hard cash. That's trash, and your legacy is everything when you a pile of ash or just dust in the wind. Or facing a photo, I'm a teacher, and there's not enough space in my dojo for every Daniel sign. Or maybe just Johnny, cause I'm much more John Creese than Mr. Miyagi. A body bag filler, leaving mics deceased, and I get away with murder. Like white police and i'll probably take it further like frightening beast unleashed upon the earth from the verses that i speak or i'm following my wife through some tj maxx or i'm sitting with my daughter watching pj masks or the history channel absorbing d-day facts fantasizing a snap and you rappers dj's wax what a strange dynamic what a time to be alive but these suckers with the weak rhymes will never survive all facts.